Now we're going to turn our attention to some quantitative concepts involved with uh, portfolio concepts. We're going to start by talking about mean variance analysis of por for portfolio management. Mean variance analysis is really the understanding of the basic uh, trade-off between risk and return. It uses some uh, insights from economics that you are probably familiar with, as well as some uh, quantitative concepts having to do with the construction and measuring the returns and uh, expected returns and variances uh, and other characteristics of portfolios. Now, before we start I'd, into actually doing the portfolio analysis, what I'd like to do is give some of the uh, uh, assumptions behind portfolio mean variance, por mean variance analysis. I've got those written down on the whiteboard, so let's turn to those now. There are five important assumptions behind mean variance analysis, and I've got those on the top of the board. First, all investors are risk averse, and that's very important. And again, this is one of those understandings from basic economics that drives mean variance analysis. The second uh, assumption is an assumption about information, that the expected return for every asset is known. And the third, likewise, is another assumption about information, that variances and covariances of all the assets are known. So every asset uh, has a known variance, a known expected return, and we, we know all of the covariances between each, excuse me, each asset and every other asset. So that's a lot of information to uh, assume that people know. The fourth assumption is uh, one, of the, one of the reasons we call this mean variance analysis. It is that investors only need to know the variances and covariances. They don't need to know anything about the uh, higher, so-called higher moments of the distribution, which encompass skewness, kurtosis, or any other aspects of the distribution. In other words, variances and covariances are sufficient for describing uh, everything that investors need to know to make their portfolio decisions. And finally, fifth, a uh, assumption that, that really is an abstraction from reality, there are no transaction costs or taxes. Now, this is uh, an important um, it's an important assumption to make the uh, analysis clean, but it's not necessarily a crucial assumption. Uh, one thing to keep in the back of your mind as we talk about the concepts is that it is easy to understand what should happen in, the world, in a world in which we live in with transaction costs and taxes. They're just going to interfere with some of the results a little bit, but they're not going to obscure the main thrust of the results that we're going to come up with. Now, mean variance analysis is uh, a very powerful tool for portfolio analysis, and we're going to be using that to develop some uh, basic concepts and uh, work our way up to understanding the CAPM. On the way to do that, we need to go down uh, to the bottom of the board and start by reviewing some portfolio math. The first concept in portfolio math is right next to the, uh, right next to the subject line, which is the concept of a, of a portfolio weight. I like to define a portfolio weight, WI, as the value of the investment in asset I divided by your total amount invested. I know that's different from the way that some people try to uh, d define portfolio weights, but I think it, it is, a, is a much more comprehensive definition in the following sense. Um, it is possible, especially uh, given the assumptions that we've made, that uh, people are going to be able to borrow as well as to lend and to sell short as well as to, uh, as well as to buy uh, outright uh, different assets. So if we compare the value of our investment in every asset, where the value of the investment could be positive in the sense that you, you're buying it and holding it, or negative in the sense that you're borrowing it or short selling it, and we, we divide that relative to the total amount you have invested from your own personal resources rather than the total value of the portfolio, then we have uh, the ability to say that the uh, uh, portfolio weights take on a wi the widest range of possible values. And in reality, we do see investors borrowing at, from some uh, assets in order to lend by, by buying other assets. So it's a much more realistic view, I think, of portfolio weights, and, and this is a nice definition I like to stick with. In order to uh, illustrate why I like this definition, let me give a quick example that I have written down below. Suppose you take $10,000 of your own, you borrow $5,000 from the bank, and invest then the total proceeds, $15,000, in asset one. What are the portfolio weights in that case? Well, according to my definition, uh, the portfolio weight on asset one is $15,000, the total value of your investment in asset I, divided by the total amount that you have personally invested. And the amount that you have personally invested is really the $10,000 of your own. You've borrowed the rest, and the borrowing is actually not, uh, is not coming out of your own pocket. What you're doing is you're actually uh, borrowing or, in some sense, short-selling an asset, and that asset is a bank loan. 
Uh, and so if we think about it in that sense, the borrowing against the bank loan is really a separate asset, call it, call it asset two, and call the portfolio weight on that asset W2, where the uh, amount invested is a negative $5,000. The minus sign signifies that you're borrowing rather than lending, uh, and that your total out-of-pocket investment remains at $10,000. And that gives us a portfolio weight of minus 0.5. Now, when we add the two portfolio weights together, we get the familiar result that the sum of the portfolio weights should be equal to 1. So just because we can let the portfolio weights be greater uh, than 1 or negative doesn't mean that we're violating any of the assumptions. Indeed, what we're doing is allowing the full range of portfolio investment possibilities to come into play. Now, in a lot of the examples, I'll be assuming that we're not going to do any sh short selling or borrowing, but we need to keep in the back of our minds that, that many uh, individuals, and especially many businesses, particularly financial intermediaries, make their livings by uh, borrowing from one set of investors to lend to, an, to a different set. So uh, by using uh, this definition, uh, we have a much better idea of uh, what portfolio weights can look like in all of their possibilities. Now what I'm going to do next is, is move on to some of the other basics of portfolio math, which is basically calculating the expected return and the variance of a portfolio now that we understand the concept of portfolio weights. All right, so let's go to the whiteboard where I've written down the uh, most basic portfolio, the two asset portfolio. What we want to know is the expected return on the portfolio. That is simply going to be W1, the portfolio weight on asset one, plus the expected times the expected return on asset one, plus the portfolio weight on the second asset, asset two, times the expected return on asset two. The variance of the portfolio of two assets is going to be given by uh, remembering our rules for uh, adding variances, W1 squared times sigma1 squared plus W2 squared times sigma2 squared plus 2 times W1, W2 times the covariance between the return on asset 1 and the return on asset 2, where I'm using the sigma1 squared notation to denote the variance of the uh, return on asset 1, sigma2 squared to denote the return, uh, the variance of the return on asset 2. Now, one thing to note is that since our definition of correlation, and here I have the correlation denoting the correlation between the return on asset 1 and the return on asset 2, uh, that's how I'm going to use these, uh, these subscripts here. Uh, that is going to be, that is defined by the covariance of re the return on asset 1 divided by the return on asset 2, uh, or return on asset 1 and asset 2 divided by the uh, standard deviation of asset 1 times the standard deviation of asset 2. That is the standard definition of the correlation. We can uh, rearrange that to show that the covariance between the return on asset 1 and the return on asset 2 is equal to the correlation coefficient times the product of the standard deviations of the two assets. Oftentimes, it's much more simple to uh, report and work with correlations and standard deviations. So what I'm going to do is rewrite my variance of the portfolio formula uh, in, in those terms. And it may seem a little, it may seem less simple now, but I think in the long run that you'll agree that it is much more simple to uh, think about uh, think about the expression of the covariance in terms of the correlation times the product of the standard deviations. So the variance is going to be the, squared, uh, the, the square of the portfolio weight times the variance of asset one plus the square of the portfolio weight on asset two times the variance of asset two plus two times the product of the weights times the correlation coefficient times the product of the standard deviations. Now that's quite a mouthful. Uh, let's do a little bit of a, an example to try to uh, just put these terms to work. Suppose that the expected return on asset one in your portfolio is 15%. The standard deviation of that asset's return is 18%. The expected return on asset two in your portfolio is 13%. The standard deviation is 14%. The correlation between those two re returns is 0.6. So it's a, it's a fairly uh, high positive correlation, but not a perfect correlation by any stretch of the imagination. Suppose you have 30% of your portfolio in asset one and 70% of your, of, your, of your assets in, uh, of your portfolio in asset two. So here I'm just going straight to, the, to uh, interpreting the portfolio weights as shares of the portfolio invested in the assets. And that's perfectly reasonable when uh, you have no short sales or no borrowings in your, in your portfolio. You can always just express that in terms of saying, I have so, such and such percentage of my uh, portfolio invested in assets one, two, three, up to n. So given these numbers, we can go ahead and calculate the expected return and the uh, variance of this uh, particular portfolio. The expected return is the portfolio weight times the return plus the portfolio weight times the return, which gives an expected return of 0.136.